What's up, everybody? Just wanted to, you know, come before you tonight, you know, and say some things that God placed upon my heart. Um, I got a question for you guys. How many of you at one point in your life thought that, you know, the way you were living wasn't deserving of God's love? You know, I, I was there at one point in time. And um, how many of y'all don't really know how much favor is upon your life, even though you aren't necessarily completely submitting yourself to Jesus Christ? How many of you? It's probably a lot, right? Um, just want to share a few share a few things with you guys tonight um the title of this i'm gonna give it favor in the midst of our sin um like i said god placed it upon my heart earlier today and i said that i would go ahead and do it so um i'm gonna just go a couple scriptures real quick in uh second samuel chapter 11 verse 2 through 4 and then verse 14 it says one even one evening, David got up from his bed and walked around on the roof of his palace. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful, and David sent some, someone out to find about her. The man said, she is Bethsaida, the daughter of Iliam and a wife of Uriah the Hittite. Then David sent messengers to get her. She came to him, and he slept with her. Now, this is David. This is King David that we're talking about. This is the one that God said had in heart, had a heart after his own heart. And then in 14 of 2 Samuel, it says, In the morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it with Uriah. And it wrote, Put Uriah out in front where the fighting is fiercest. Then withdraw from him so that he will be struck down and die. See, Uriah was the husband of the woman that he slept with. And he wanted her for himself, so he set it up so his his top general, one of his top generals, would die, so he could have her to himself. Now, if that's not shysty, I don't know what is. And once again, this is David we're talking about, King David, um, that a lot of the gospels reference to, and you know, he's such a high figure. Um, also, let's go to. Let's go to John, the book of John, verse, what, chapter 8, verse 1 through 11, really quick. Let me see what that's about. Then they all went home, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At dawn, he appeared again in the temple courts where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group. And said to Jesus, teach, teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. And the law of Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now, what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he strained up and said to them, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away, one at a time. The, old, the, the older ones first, until Jesus, only Jesus was left, with the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. Now, this woman was caught in the act of adultery, which is not <laughs> carried lightly, especially in the Old Testament. Women, was, women were getting stoned for this, you know what I'm saying? So just think about that for a second and, and, and understand the seriousness of that. And then the last scripture I'm going to hit y'all with is Romans 5, verses 8 through 11. And that is, and that says, 
but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have not been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if while we were, were we, we, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son. How much more have been reconciled shall we be saved through his life? Not only in this, but we are we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. And all I wanted to do tonight was basically show you guys, give you guys an account of we still have favor in God. He still loves us, even in the midst of our sin. Even in our failures, our shortcomings, we all fall short of the glory of God. So don't feel discouraged in your walk with Jesus Christ. Don't feel like you have to be perfect to approach him. He accepts you as you are and he loves you just as is. I, for example, I fall daily. I fall and make mistakes. I fornicate. I may lie. I may have foul language. I may do a lot of what scripture tells us not to do, but he still loves me. and He still has favor on my life. Every day I see his blessings and he gives me something that I don't deserve. Why does he do that? Because he loves me and he loves you as well. So just take this. Um, you can look over those scriptures and read them for yourself and talk to somebody. Like, share, comment. Um, I just want to see where you guys, what you guys think. And, um... Like I said, God loves you. Peace.